Alright, so here I'm at it again. Getting ready to install my engine back into the engine bay. I got lucky, I thought I had to change my engine mount or mounting brackets, but turned out that I was able to take uh, after I removed my drive shaft I noticed that the part that was milled out for the woodroof key actually went further aft towards the shaft, towards the end of the shaft so to speak. And um well it was just just about an inch. So what I did I after I removed the shaft I put on my hydraulic press and just pushed the um Draw a propeller shaft further into the flange. Basically, it was protruding out of the flange. And um, well, the and then I just simply cut it off, you know, to um, so it would um, not interfere with the flange on the transmission side. So I'm getting ready to put the motor back in. And um, once I got it back into the um, motor mounts, which they're still in the same position, of course, so nothing really should have changed. And then I, um, well, hopefully that puts my propeller in the right position. We'll see. So, yes, please keep watching. Yeah, that was it. Engine's back in position, sitting back on the engine mounts, just like I pulled it out. I pulled already the um, flange onto the transmission output flange, and well, next thing I'm gonna go outside and check now um, how far the propeller has moved forward. That is the moment of truth. Hopefully it went all the way I thought. We'll see. Wow, that's the first one. What a pleasant surprise. It worked at first try. Yes, though the, the gap is gone. It's just enough of a gap that I can be sure if I change the propeller that I still have a little bit of room to play around with. But that's exactly how I wanted it. There we go. Perfect. Well, let's see how the rudder does. Let me zoom this out a little bit. There we go.
perfectly clear. Nice. Let's double checking the other side. Ah, of course, that's going to be the same, anyways. That's it. Oh, that makes me happy. So, now all that's left is putting everything back on the engine and moving on to the next project. I guess it would be a good idea to get rid of this uh, massive steel beam first. Yeah, I'm gonna have to muscle that thing back out. Oh well. Wow. Okay, now I'm just gonna have to hook everything back up. Just start with my electric wires. Get that out of the way. So yeah, the engine basically sits back in the same position. Um, tomorrow I'm going to um, tighten up the transmission flange. Still have to do some fine adjustment because I uh, didn't get it completely correct. The way I had set up, I had a slight bind up in. The propeller shaft when I was spinning so it's gonna be a little bit of fumbling uh, playing with shims and whatever but eventually I'm gonna get it I'm not gonna film all this because it's just gonna be too drawn out and it's really um, not much information there so yeah there's not much to this engine um, I um, replaced that motor, well I got this motor a couple of years ago 
Yeah, initially there was a Perkins 4107 in here, which I completely rebuilt. Unfortunately, I um, I guess I got a Chinese rebuilt kit for this motor, and make a long story short, end up I had problems with actually one piston actually cracking around the piston ring, so I had to take it back out because I noticed some misfire. And as I had it out, I was just looking around on, like I usually do on Facebook Marketplace and whatever. All those places where I usually find stuff for my boat. And somebody was selling this Beta Marine motor. It's a 28 horsepower. And the story was that the engine was just put in a boat, in a sailboat. Supposedly the engine was brand new. And a few months or a few weeks after they had installed the engine without ever even had it fired up, the boat sunk at the dock. Yeah, like that never like that ever happened before, right? <laughs> yeah. Boats tend to sink on docks because fucking Thorhard's breaking or some stupid shit happens. It's so easy to prevent, but I guess some people are just fucking dumb. That's just the way it is, that's what I say, people are fucking dumb. I'm not sugarcoating it. If you can't take care of your throw holes, make sure they are not in tip-top shape at all times. Don't have a damn boat. Get a car, get a whatever. Anyhow, well, enough of that rant. Yeah, so I ended up with this motor dirt fucking cheap. I paid 1500 bucks for this whole motor. And indeed, it turned out it is a brand new motor. I took the valve cover off, took the oil pan off, because it's just the things I do. Because I'm a mechanic and can't leave shit alone, I have to inspect it, and sure shit everything was. As I was told, brand new. It has never been fired up before I got it, because the oil was just brand new, just put in. Of course I put the engine on the crate, fired it up and ran it for couple of weeks outside the boat and it's just perfect. Came with dual alternator setup. The second one I just I took off so to get to this particular motor mount. The purpose for the dual alternator setup is one is for well designed to keep the engine battery charged which is this one and the second one is for basically running your house bangs or you actually technically use this whole arm engine as a generator which is more logical than putting a second standalone generator in in a boat uh, I wouldn't even have the room for it anyways but so yeah so I ended up with this brand new beta marine 20 horsepower engine I was always looking for a beta marine I was always impressed by it, the way this company handles their um business, customer service, or what I have for you is the most logical design um, I can imagine. They're using strictly Kubota engines which are absolutely excellent motors. Those are fantastic motors. They're not overpriced like Yanmar's are or <laughs> don't ever fuck with Mitsubishi. Westerbeek was notorious using some Mitsubishi engines and I had my share of grief with those things. Kubota is very transparent. They will sell you every fucking part there is. They will tell you what engine it is. Beta only themselves, they will tell you what engine they're using. I don't make a secret like exact as like exactly Westerbeek does, this notorious piece of shit company, you know. Well, they're going bankrupt anyways. Well deserved so. <clears throat> so I'm very happy with this motor. Originally the Allberg 37, uh, yeah, the Allberg 37s, they had, from what I understand, let me put this camera on a tripod so I can, don't have to hold it. So as I was saying, the Allberg 37s, they came initially with, factory-wise, with our, basically two options of engines. Most of them received a two-cylinder Volvo diesel. Which at the well, I guess at the day, at its start time, it was a great motor, but it's now an outdated dinosaur. Horribly, horribly hard to find 
parts for and um, if you find them they're overpriced very heavy motor putting out I believe 26 horsepower so I'm pretty good with this 28 horsepower um, beta marine that probably even weighs only half what the, the, the Volvos do the second option was and that's what my boat was outfitted with was the Perkins 4107 Marinized by Westerbeek, but you know, people I'm telling you, Westerbeek has never ever built a single engine, they just marinize shit. So they called it Westerbeek 4107. <laughs> so they put their uh, heat exchanger on there, and that's just about it. Call it Westerbeek, anyhow. So, but like I said, I ended up with this motor, I'm very happy about it. If I would have not found this motor, I would have possibly considered going electric because now they're getting cheaper and uh, I would come to the point to say if anybody who starts you know taking old diesels out and has to start over considering the cost the replacement cost of a newer diesel engine or even remanufacturing you're looking at several thousand dollars usually those beta marines they're new they're running this particular one probably close to ten thousand dollars you know um, if you can get lucky and find one that's good use, you're still probably forking out four or five grand. Um, you can you can buy a complete electric setup for the same money nowadays. You know, um, possibly 20 kW electric motor would would push that boat equivalent to what this motor does. You know, um, so yeah, if it would ever come down to that this motor is going to fail, which probably not going to happen in my lifetime, but if it were to fail. The next set setup would be electric. So yeah, that's that's it. Actually, um, what else? There's not much to say about it. Yeah, my engine compartment is still wide open. I removed everything of the original engine compartment and gave me enough space to work around. And I'm gonna build a um, framework over it where with. Um, several access panels that I completely be able completely to remove. I haven't figured out yet how exactly I'm going to do it, but I'll, I'll I'll figure a way. To me, I'm I'm a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic. I'm doing this all my life. And one thing I can't stand is if um, I have to work on something and everything is highly obstructed. There's no reason for in a, a in any boat that's over 30 foot long and has a small diesel in there that it should be hard to. Uh, which should be hard to be accessible. Um, I understand when they build those things, they're trying to keep the engine compartment as small as possible. Yeah, because most people, come on, face it, people. You have to make your little woman happy and she wants to have more room for her dishes and all the little knickknacks, so engine compartment is unsightly. So screw the fucking engine compartment and put more knickknacks in the damn thing. Not, not, not with me. Um, I, I admit it, I'm a fucking grumpy old man, never thought I'm going to be that way. <laughs> Probably more of a wannabe sailor than an actual sailor. I just have fun doing it and hopefully I get to sail a boat one day. Um, but my priorities are uh, based on convenience, not on um, beauty or anything else. You know That means if I'm out there in the, in the water, who knows what can happen to the motor, but I would be want to be able to access everything and uh, do at least some minor repairs without just uh, uh, trying to yank the whole out engine out all the time and um, um, yeah, obstructing myself unnecessary. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it what I have to say for now. And, um, um, I hope my video clips can help um, other people a little bit, maybe maybe not helping so much, but maybe inspiring. Uh, my take on it is, if you remodel a boat completely on your own or completely from ground up, there is no, there is no recipe how you put stuff in. It is all up to your personal interpretation. So build it the way you want it. Um, and prioritize the things that are important. Uh, like I said, access to the engine is very vital because you really don't want to 
be in a situation that you were maybe you're driving a canal tight channel and with lots of traffic you know i mean yeah it's a sailboat and you shouldn't be using that engine a lot but face it you know we all have to motor those things around every so often and uh you really don't want to have all of a sudden smoke bouldering out of your engine compartment or your companion way hatches or whatever because something just went sideways with your motor you know so um the more access you give yourself to that engine, the easier it is to maintain it, uh, check it. I have the habit that every time I, you know, well, this is not my first sailboat. I used before that I had a Tartan 27 with a two-cylinder Yanma motor, which was an excellent motor too, and um, very reliable. Never had a problem with it. Nevertheless, every time I got to my boat and I used a Tartan a lot before I. Um, went out to on the water I took the engine compartment opened the engine compartment and watched the engine made sure there's no water spraying around make sure all the hoses are still tied on there no fuel dripping no oil dripping um, you know either way um, loss of oil loss of coolant I guarantee you that's gonna fuck up your day royally <laughs> um, so be thoroughly Keep it maintenance friendly and um, in theory those engines they should last forever. You keep the oil changed, you keep it from overheating, keep it lubricated and um, yeah that's my that's my advice and um, thank you for watching to my next unedited raw video clip <laughs> good luck to everybody